Ladies and gentlemen, a warm welcome from very sunny Berlin. My name is Dein Stecher, Vice President IBS Software. On behalf of Claire and me, um, I wish us uh, a very happy day today. Today is Super Tuesday, as I call it. Super Tuesday because um, we have today two presentations which are also in the context of Ladies Beyond Flying. It's another uh, industry initiative I'm running for diversity and empowerment of women because uh, Camille, who is our speaker today, is also a lady beyond flying. But uh, in the context of airline crewing Enigma, she is giving her presentation today. Um, Camille, how would you like to have it? Question answer during the session. I shall help you or you want to have it at the end of the session. Uh, at the end would be great, but if it's suitable for all of us. OK, good. So um, round about 45 minutes um, and yeah. stage is yours. And uh, thank you for being our guest speaker today. Thank you. Thank you for inviting Daniel and uh, thank all of you uh, for your time. Let me share my presentation first. Can you see the screen? Yes, we can. OK, OK, then. Again, I want to thank you for inviting me, Daniel. And I want to thank DJ that uh, he shared his slot with me. Uh, I will talk about uh, challenges and opportunities in the IOCC of Sun Express Airlines. I am Kamile. Uh, I will intro introduce myself, and then I will continue with Sun Express. Uh, and please notice that it's just episode one. Uh, and we will have the second one with uh, DJ, my manager. Here, I wanna talk about my path firstly. I have graduated from the oldest aviation college in Turkey, uh, which is Eskişehir Technical University. Uh, my department was aviation management, uh, but it was not a conscious choice uh, and it was by chance. My high school teacher let me off and my aviation uh, adventure just started in the college. And during my study, I had an internship in Dalaman Airport. Maybe you know it's a small airport in Turkey, but it's uh, for vacation uh, and holiday travelers. And after that internship, uh, I was working in the airport for summer season. At that time, I feel like, uh, yes, I'm happy with working in aviation industry, and I became sure about that. Uh, after that, pandemic started, and uh, I had distance, distance learning during my study. So during this uh, period, I was uh, learning from home. So I thought that maybe I can have a chance in capital of Turkey, Ankara, working in a company. It was Nest Worldwide Services, and we were providing uh, trainings for aviation security staff at the airports. And after that, uh, actually, I can say that the first step to my career, career is Sun Express. Last year, I started to work in Sun Express OCC uh, as administration and training assistant specialist. Uh, but last year in June, we, we had a transformation from OCC to IOCC. After that transformation, uh, I started to work as safety compliance and training assistant specialist. Now I am happy to work here and uh, I will continue with the company that uh, I am working. Probably most of you know about Sun Express, but uh, I don't know how can I say, but I am feeling good while mentioning that Sun Express has lots of awards and etc. Uh, Sun Express was established in 1989, and after one year, uh, we had first flight from Frankfurt to Antalya. It was in April. Uh, later on, we continued our operations till now. Uh, and now uh, we have 60 aircraft and we have one aircraft in order as far as if I am not wrong. Uh, now we are flying more than 30 countries, uh, more than 90 destinations. And last year we carried more than uh, 11 million passengers. And also I am really proud of uh, mentioning that uh, the hours we had in 2018, uh, we have rated the most punctual airline in Germany. Uh, and also in the same year, we rated as Turkey's safest airline by, by our authority, aviation authority. And in 2019, uh, we were the fifth best leisure airline. But last year, we have been awarded uh, as the worst best leisure airline by Skytrax. Uh, and also the last award, as far as I'm aware, uh, we have rated one of the top three service exporters in Turkey. And let's talk about last year. As 
I mentioned before, we carried 11 million passengers, and this year our aim is uh, 12 million passengers. In uh, in that case, we increased our seat capacity by 13% for 2023, uh, and now we have at uh, 26 new routes to our flight operations. Uh, that was the Sun Express part, and now I want to go top down and talk about integrated operations control center. As I told uh, earlier, uh, we were working as operations control center, uh, but now we had a transformation in June and we turned to integrated operations control center. This means uh, we have started to work with uh, other operational stakeholders in under one roof. So we collect uh, all operational departments in one office in Sun Express Antalya Plaza headquarters. Uh, actually, the uh, first benefit of this uh, decreasing the telecommunication mistakes between us during the uh, live operations. Uh, and while we were working as OCC, only flight planning and flight watching team were working together. But after the transformation, maintenance control center, maintenance planning, AOG desk, crew control, uh, and ground operations departments joined us. Uh, actually, we already working closely with them, but now physically we are working closely with them. Uh, and it caused that uh, all responsible departments for a flight operation uh, met on the same page and they are looking at the same point uh, and problems regarding the communication decrease. Now, I will explain our organization chart. As you may see, we have three management for, for our flight operations. Uh, the first management is for 72 hours operational management. They are dealing with uh, live operation. And the second part, operational excellence part, uh, they are giving the best idea uh, regarding our performance analysis and system analysis. They are making the systems uh, working properly. Uh, and the third one is, which I am working there, uh, management is for obeying the first rule, our first rule, safety first, and compliance and the training follow up on uh, within the IOCC. And uh, here is the number of total workers in IOCC office. Seems like 104, but uh, I couldn't update it because new employee, employees joined us to GOCC maintenance planning, so I'm not aware. And also, we uh, have new office for the uh, day workers, so I cannot see how many people we are in the office now, but we are more than 104, I am sure. By the way, this is, uh, this is mm -hmm. a fantastic... Uh, that you are sharing this kind of data, uh, mm -hmm. because I think this is uh, also a missing data point within the industry uh, when it comes um, uh, to, to talk about efficiency um, mm -hmm. and um, how is really uh, the workload of people in the uh, IOCC. So that's uh, very great that you share this. Thank you. Yes, actually, it was the most challenging part for uh, OCC, from OCC to IOCC part. I will talk about it later. And I wanted to share a picture from our office in Antalya. This is uh, the place that we conduct our live operations in OCC, IOCC, I mean. Many, many screens. Yes, many, many screens. <laughs> <laughs> and many, many people. <laughs> uh, and now uh, I want to summarize our department's main responsibilities in four articles, actually. Uh, let me read. Departments were all, where all operational department representatives work together uh, with both internal and external parties. As, as I told, the MCC, maintenance planning, crew control, all operational departments work under one roof. And uh, our other responsibility is minimizing cost related fuel burn, of course, irregularities, passenger compensation, and uh, passenger welfare. We are the department who is the owner of on-time performance. Uh, we are following up the operation and drive to improve the operation using lessons learned. Uh, and also we are responsible for 72 hours operational management. Uh, actually in the end, our customers are passengers, uh, but also I think that it's my point, point of view. Uh, our other customers flight crews because we are providing in-flight assistance to the flight crews. So, we are actually working for uh, make the operation efficiently uh, for welfare of passengers and also flight crews. And now, 
The page is for uh, challenges and opportunities. Actually, it was DJ's uh, subject to mention about. So I want to make just an introduce and then he will continue and detail uh, what I was talking about. Uh, and if we want to start from opportunities, actually many items can be counted as opportunity and challenge in my opinion, but let's talk. Uh, as same as all industries and departments in Sun Express and all airlines, we have opportunities and challenges uh, as well in IOCC. Uh, but as an IOCC, uh, our first opportunity is, I think, change and integration. Uh, actually, I will say changes and opportunity also a challenge. This is the first item that I was mentioning. Uh, but successful implementation of change and integration uh, leads us to be more efficient and uh, productive, actually. Since we reduced the calls emailing, so we gain time during the operations. Uh, this, uh, this was because of the integration, so we reduced the mistakes also. Uh, and also with this integration, all operational teams came together and uh, met at the same point. So they are all aware what is going on and uh, what we are expecting during uh, day operations. And also, when we look at uh, all departments, all uh, stories from other airlines and departments, change always seems like difficult because leaving the old routine and learning new things and aligning, adapting them, it's hard. Uh, but in the end, the result is most look good because uh, always new is better. Uh, and uh, the other opportunity, in my opinion, if you want to change some processes, you are noticing that uh, there was improper processes in the earlier past uh, works. So when you want to try the things in your processes, you can easily notice what is wrong, uh, what was the pain point, and then you can start to fix it and you can implement new process. So this is a big opportunity for us also. And uh, I cheated on you. Uh, Daniel, it's your sentences. Agile and flexible are the case of the airline operations. So it's for IOCC, Sun Express IOCC also. Uh, we need to keep step with ad hoc changes and we need to take prompt actions uh, against them. So uh, being agile and flexible is a very big opportunity for us. And the other opportunity is increased. Uh, analytics. Uh, I mean, we have lots of dashboards and reporting lines in IOCC because we uh, established the analyzing team and reporting team now. Uh, the dashboards uh, may be daily, weekly, uh, or live to uh, predict what's going, what can be uh, be faced in the future. Uh, and the other thing is reporting lines. Uh, reporting lines, very important, but uh, here's the case sentences here. If you are reporting something, uh, you should be clear and open. Uh, it's from management to employees and from employees to management. Then you can see the facts and you can take action accordingly. And also keeping colleagues, employees and management up to date always uh, drives us one step forward. Uh, the last one is benchmarking. Uh, during this period, we visited lots of airlines, airports, airlines, partner airlines, and uh, we promoted ourselves and we saw that what is going on outside of Sun Express IOCC. Uh, and now step on the uh, challenges. Uh, the first challenge uh, is a volatile environment and uh, the environment is all on ongoing operations, uh, any situation affects airline industry. Uh, so we need to deal with challenge during the live operations. Uh, for instance, weather conditions, airport uh, congestion, air traffic intensity, staff shortage, uh, strike from uh, airport staff or bird strike, anything can be counted here. So this is very big challenge for all airline operations in my opinion. And uh, the other one is uh, much more specific to IOCC, actually. Uh, we have started from the bottom and implemented the change of management uh, to the top. Uh, and during this period, uh, complying with regulations and uh, company procedures is a challenge. Uh, and also, uh, we are uh, always afraid of uh, Changed, but uh, after we took the first phase of change, uh, the rest is really relaxing. 
and also during the implementation of this change, uh, we had uh, internal challenges such as documentation transformation uh, and getting approvals from authorities, uh, fully complying with regulations, uh, having lots of audits if we are going to do something wrong or right. Uh, and of course, starting to the project and closure of the project. And also I remember that we uh, had really bad times uh, with the structure uh, design, new organization uh, announcement, interviews for new hires, but uh, I think we managed well this changed. Uh, and also the other challenge is systems used in IOCC, in my opinion. O of course, we are doing best to improve our systems and uh, pretend the uh, system dumps, but we cannot be sure that system will work properly always and we will never have a, a system down. So, uh, being prepared against the kind of system down uh, is a challenge from our side because it's live operation. If you miss something related with systems, you uh, need to jump to the manual system and it's too hard, but being prepared is always good for that. And also, uh, as you saw our, from our organizational chart, we had three management team, but uh, we have worked for people on this change of management. So, and also we had limited resources to complete this management. So it was a challenge for us, uh, but how we deal with this challenge, uh, we, shape, we, uh, we established a shared working style and everybody focused on his or her own area. Then we, mm, deal with it successfully. And the last challenge and uh, most effective one actually, uh, it's resistance from the staff. Maybe you remember from our talk with Suna during Ladies Beyond Flying, the first phase of change management is uh, demotivation and uncertainty. You cannot uh, tell people that everything will be good because they don't believe there is always uh, uncertainty in the work environment. Uh, only time is feeding the motivation, uh, but during this period, explain the change will open new doors for our new structure and uh, new working style is too hard. That was the hardest side, part, in my opinion. I have a question here too. I think yeah, this yeah, is, uh, is fantastic about uh, change and the management and so on. Um, so you are uh, a role model for me because you're pretty young to the industry, mm -hmm. but you take yeah. the responsibility you present and uh, you, you uh, support now your boss who has a conflict. That's fantastic. Um, this resistance from staff. So do you yeah. believe resistance comes more from older people or you have also experienced resistance from younger people in the organization? Actually, it was not related with the years that he worked here, not related with experience, because everybody was shocked because the all systems use all ways of working changed. So, and also it was uncertain because during the announcement we had a uh, earthquake. Maybe you know, in February we had a catastrophic earthquake in. Uh, Turkey, so we couldn't announce our organizational change for three months. Then people started to think what will happen, which position I will be transferred. So I didn't notice that even uh, the resistance from experienced people or younger or older people. And also you were referring on this Ladies Beyond Flying talk with Suna mm -hmm. last month. Mm -hmm. So if you have to give a recommendation to all the other airline colleagues here in the audience and the billions of people who will watch it on YouTube later, if you have to give them a recommendation about the most three critical items they should really focus on in and business transformation, what would you recommend? Uh, actually, people who is working in an office uh, will be demotivated, but the management stage uh, always should be motivated. This is the first item that I can suggest. And uh, you should increase integration between the employees. For example, uh, we were working with, with 50 people and then we became 100, but nobody knows each other. Just they have calls, emails, etc., but no face to face communication. And then we created uh, warm up dinners. Uh, birthday parties, etc. So uh, the time passed quickly and people imagined that we will have good things uh, in the next future steps. So this is the second uh, suggestion from my side that keep people integrated with some uh, events. 
So it sounds like the human factor. It's all about the human factor. Yeah, 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 actually. <laughs> Good. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Daniel. And uh, I talked about challenges that we had during the change, uh, not during the change, in IOCC, actually, because we are always having changes in uh, airline operations. So uh, I want to talk about how we managed the, these challenges in IOCC. Uh, actually, the first thing is, and uh, the most important one, keeping management closer to the operations. Uh, I mean, what kind of closure? I mean, regarding the irregularities and improvements on these irregularities. If they are closer to the operation and they are aware of what is going on in Sun Express flights, flight operations, and uh, and we can get suggestions from them, we can do our work efficiently. And as I mentioned earlier, daily, weekly, monthly reporting for seeing big picture. Uh, actually, it is for uh, the last item, deep root cause analysis. If we see the irregularity and its root, root cause, we can see the pain point and we can work on it. And uh, we will work, take pre precautions, to not uh, have this irregularity again. Uh, and the other thing is uh, idea and feedback sharing uh, from staff to the management and uh, vice versa. Uh, this keeps the office up to date and leads the staff to be more active on decision, make, decision making. And this is the most important part. Uh, in some cultures, uh, people, the management uh, doesn't lead the people to make decisions. They are just working, 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 and uh, at the end, man manager gives the decision. So it's uh, not good to uh, improve yourself for the employees. So I think this is important to give people, share their opinions and make their own decisions. Then if it's the wrong, uh, they can change it. They can see their service and they can decide the uh, right one in the next time. And also uh, we had cross-departmental trainings. Uh, it was the trainings between new uh, joint teams, MCC, uh, maintenance planning, and also the other operational stakeholders like cost control, et cetera, which we are uh, working closely with them. Uh, it uh, leads us to be aware of what actually they are doing and uh, what actually their responsibilities so that we can directly contact them in case of a issue or situation uh, related to their field. And anything left. And uh, the last thing is uh, culture change. Uh, you know, our office in Turkey, but we are a venture airline of uh, Turkish Airlines uh, and uh, Lufthansa. And we have a Dutch manager and we have two Turkish managers and one of them is a pilot. Uh, so we have lots of culture diversity here, but it leaves us a good uh, position because uh, Combining the different culture ideas is always good. At the end, we can uh, meet in, in a point. So it's good for us. Camila, I, I remember yeah. in uh, last month's presentation, I was asking you about um, your boss being a Dutch and whether yeah. you need more Dutchness in your mm -hmm. organization. And so what is your, because Dutch are very direct and um, so yes. that's why, what was your experience on that? Actually, if we will have a, just one manager, which is Dutch, yes, we just have direct uh, sentences or wordings, but we have three managers and three managers very different from each other. Uh, Mr. Joshkun, who was my earlier boss, and he was very supportive to be working Sun Express and uh, which lead me to improve myself in Sun Express IOCC. Uh, he is like a father. He is explaining in detail and DJ just focusing on the result and uh, he just gives his feedback and you can do it or not. Uh, he won't uh, make any comment on your decision, but he will give his best feedback. And Fatih Kaptan, uh, he is not my manager, but operational department manager. Uh, and he is very relaxable against DJ. So taking all feedbacks from three managers and combine them, it's very good. The diversity of culture, very good in Sun Express IOCC now. Yeah, can I continue, Daniel? Please, please. 
<laughs> Thank you. And uh, here I want to talk about the last uh, item that we how we manage challenges. It's innovation and digitalization. It's very common in everywhere in internet, LinkedIn, that all companies going through drive their company through innovation and digitalization. But in my uh, point of view, uh, the key is finding the balance between the past uh, and innovative feature. Because, for example, Sun Express for 30 years uh, managing the operations and uh, it's a good airline. So there's a success secret here. So we need to keep the past and we need to combine innovative feature, in my opinion. My last slide, uh, actually it's not related with DJ's subject, but uh, I want to mention about that. Uh, the last topic that I want to mention is the challenge in aviation industry, not in Sun Express, IOCC, but uh, all in airlines and aviation industry. Uh, it's male dominated staffing uh, and age limitation for women. Uh, during the last talk, you asked me, how did you feel about when you started to work in OCC? Because it was very, male dominated, I was day worker, still I am day worker, and just four women working in OCC and they were shift workers. So in a month, I saw four women in one week. So it was hard for me, but now uh, diversity in Sun Express increased and we started to hire new women. So now uh, there's no problem, but in general, I want to talk about uh, this problem. In my opinion, all ideas, all efforts, uh, and time we spend in a company is valuable. Uh, it's important. It's not important that uh, where are we from, uh, at what age we are, how many years we experience in companies, which religion we, we believe, uh, and our gender. But it seems like innovation. Uh, there's a belief that uh, men make better business than women. I really don't believe that. Uh, and I defense that uniting the forces of two genders is needed. Because as a human being, uh, I may have a gap and a man can have a gap. So we can fill up our gaps and work together, combine our different uh, ways of our thinking. Uh, for example, uh, we need to make a decision in company, in IOCC. Probably man has a shortcut in his mind and he will, he will directly jump into the conclusion. Maybe it's wrong or not, I don't know. But a woman can see all side effects of this decision and possible results. So if we unite these two gender under one roof, so we can uh, reach to the most efficient decision, in my opinion. To sum up, uh, if there's a yes answer, it's yes for a man. But uh, for a woman, every yes means no to something else. So <laughs> I want to. Uh, break this rule in aviation industry. And on the other hand, uh, age discrimination in, in aviation for women. Uh, in aviation, young ladies seem like they're inexperienced and the older ladies uh, seems like they are busy with uh, family business. So we don't have a gap to make ourselves accept acceptable to work in an airline industry. In my opinion, we shouldn't focus on uh, this kind of things or years experience, just we need to focus on skills. And the other thing is age, uh, age discrimination. Uh, age diversity is providing a better organization performance, but against of that, uh, age discrimination leads lower job satisfaction and loyalty. So we need to keep eye on two topics, in my opinion. How we can deal with this, these problems? Maybe we can just focus on skills. I am not talking about just women, also for men. Uh, and But actually, the rest of for women, we need to promote them in their careers because always men promoted for their careers. Uh, as you may see, lots of management is full of men, just from 10 hundred management team members, uh, 10, 10 is women. Uh, so, uh, I think we should avoid interrupting their speech because, for example, a man can don't care about someone interrupts uh, him, but uh, we are really caring about them. Please do not interrupt during a, a woman's speech. And we need to be respectful to everyone's ideas. And as a woman, we should uh, make a self-promoting. Uh, we don't need anyone, but uh, if we promote ourselves, then other people start to will do that. We need to voice up 
because there's equality and we need to defend ourselves. We need to learn to say no. Uh, and uh, during our career, we need to pick a manager, not a job. <laughs> that was my presentation. Thank you for your time again. I have to admit in the hindsight, I'm very, very glad that uh, DJ uh, had a conflict because um, I remember yeah. he texted me, that, oh, I have a conflict and so on. And um, I then suggested him that you do his presentation. Um, and I think uh, I was breaking one of the rules uh, because I, I ask you, whether you can do a presentation yeah. on Ladies Beyond Flying, and you didn't say no. So I think this last sentence, you have to say no, depends on which topic. I'm very glad uh, that uh. Um, you accepted <clears throat> this, and um, I'm very impressed from this presentation. And I now open the floor for question and answers to everybody in this call. Uh, of course, everybody's oh. speechless. <laughs> I can fully understand. But maybe <laughs> there are some questions from the audience. If you have, well, I Claire, please. please. Yes. Yeah. yeah, so thank you so much for giving this presentation. I find it really interesting and inspiring because that is a quite a large change to undertake to integrate your operations center, um, especially when you've been operating a certain way for so long. Um, I know you're still early in your transformation, but what mm -hmm. are some of the um successes that you've seen so far have you have you been able to measure some of the improvements um, that came as a result of the changes yes yes uh actually uh, we were aiming to have new tools during this transformation and we got all of them and we started to use digital new digital tools and also uh, we were planning to have this project to uh, in two years but now we are fully implemented always change is going on but we are fully implemented this change and a new organizational structure uh, started to work during this high summer season i think this is the most successful part for us for the change lena hey. yeah thank you really really interesting uh speech and and presentation thank you for that um for me what would what i would be interested what would be your let's say the major lessons learned what would be the recommendation you would give for another organization undergoing a similar change uh, what would be yeah. like the key learning you 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 would pull out? Actually, during this change management, I worked on the documentation transformation process. So my idea and my suggestion would be first do the documentation and then uh, jump to the uh, transformation. The implementation phase should be after the documentation phase uh, because airlines uh, should be comply with the regulations and if you didn't complete your documentation part you didn't comply with regulations and you cannot prove it it's too hard uh, to transformation after implementation this is my suggestion Okay, you were talking about benchmarking, and I know from yeah. DJ that a group of uh, Sun Express colleagues traveled around the world and visited yeah. other airline operations control center. Were they seeing completely different things um, or rather commonalities also at other airlines? Because there's always when I when I meet airlines, everybody is uh, convinced we are unique. The way we operate is completely different than other airlines. So what was the take of the group uh, from the, the visits? Uh, actually, we put uh, a name for each visit. For example, if they are visiting, visiting handling agent, it's related with PRM passengers. Uh, and if it's an uh, air traffic control, for example, in Antalya, we had a construction work during this summer period. So they visited to explain our uh, problems during the operations. And for the other airlines visit, we had batch benchmarking and the aim was comparing each other and see if uh, they are using a system better than us and then we can improve our systems. <laughs> and was there one airline where they thought this is now uh, a role model for Sun Express and Sun Express Airlines tries to copy oh. this other airline they have visited? Actually, uh, this is Turkish Airlines and Lufthansa. 
Yeah, so no more airlines that we visited, we are getting role model from them, but uh, we are trying to comply with our uh, head airlines. Very diplomatic answer, I like it. <laughs> <laughs> no answer I can give you now. <laughs> no, very good. <laughs> Matt, Jurate, Laura, Alex, do you have questions? Stay speechless. Ah, Laura, please. Yeah, hi everybody. Yeah, thank you. Thank mm. you for the presentation. It's very interesting. Mm -hmm. Actually, from my side, I have a, have a question regards your org chart because I saw that operational mm. excellence manager and compliance was mm. under IOCC. Do you also have centralized compliance and uh, operational excellence uh, uh, departments in the company? And how are you collaborating all together? Actually, we don't have a centralized operational excellence uh, section in our company, but we have compliance. Uh, in our company. Actually, uh, this means the boxes means that in Sun Express uh, with the compliance department, safety compliance and training uh, personnel working closely with, it's a, a bridge between them. And for the operational excellence team, uh, each department has excellence team, for example, ground operations excellence team. So uh, they are all connected to the operational directorate, but each of them works uh, separate from each other. And maybe I can ask one more. And how about, let's say, mm -hmm. sales, commercial, or something like that? Do they also have uh, excellence teams and do they collaborate or uh, do you have operational excellence only within operations? Operations in operational directory. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Any further question? Okay, without putting any pressure on all okay. the nice airlines colleagues I'm seeing here on picture. Um, Camila, you are one year in the industry or one and a half? Yeah. Yeah. 14, um, 14 so, months, yeah. Yeah. So I think other uh, have a longer experience. So you are all invited to consider also giving a talk about your operations because I think this is the community spirit of the airline crewing uh, enigma. Uh, and we want to share uh, industry's best practice. And uh, so please uh, ping me if you want to give a talk. And uh, now looking to the uh, to the person who is somehow responsible that um, Camille gave a talk. It is DJ because DJ wrote me uh, last year a line said, "Yeah, he has a new employee and she shall join Ladies Beyond Flying." And um, mm -hmm. so he is then um, continuing the episode two of the challenges and opportunities in the IOCC next month. So same time, and um, we look forward uh, to this session. Um, thank you again, uh, Camille, for your presentation. I'm blown away, and um, I wish everybody that you please stay healthy, safe, smart, upbeat, enthusiastic, and positive. And uh, thank you for joining Airline Crewing Enigma. Daniel, I want to thank you all of you for your time and listening to me during the presentation. Have a nice day. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye, everyone. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye.